Good day. This is Teacher Shamus, and I welcome you on to our math class. One of the primary reasons in mathematics instruction is for you to learn how to solve problems. Problem solving is a part of your daily life activities and experiences. Each day, you face a wide variety of problems. Suppose you wake up late in the morning, you look at the time, and then you realize that you don't have enough time to prepare for school. You are confronted with a problem. That's why, in this video presentation, we will learn how to solve problems involving fractions. Our learning target Solve routine or non-routine problems involving division without or any of the other operations and all numbers using appropriate problem-solving strategies and tools. Now, are you ready to learn? So this children talking about problem-solving. Why can you solve problems involving fractions very easily? I use different strategies to solve them. Yes, in solving problem, we use different strategies. Do you know George Polia? George Polia is a great teacher and mathematician. He was known as the father of modern problem solving. He was known to his four-step problem solving model. Step 1. Understand and analyze the problem. In understanding and analyzing problem, know what are given and what are asked. Find words or clues to the operations involved. Two, devise a plan. A plan or strategy is a way of solving the problem. First, know how the facts relate to each other. Next, make a plan for solving the problem. Devising more than one plan is often useful so that you can compare the effectiveness of each one. Here are some strategies. Guessing, estimating, and checking the reasonableness of the answer. Drawing picture, diagrams, and models to represent the problem. Writing equations or number statements. Making lists, tables, or graphs. Finding a pattern. Working backwards. And solving a simpler problem. strategy. Example number one. Writing an equation. Eleanor bought 24 flowers. Two-thirds of the flowers are white. How many are white? Let n be the number of white flowers. Since two-thirds are white, then that is two-thirds times n equals 24. To solve, think of 24 as two-thirds of a number. To get one-third of the number, divide 24 by 2. So, one-third of n is 12. To find n, add 24 and 12. The answer is 36. To check, See if you can get 24 if you replace n with 36. It's like 2 thirds times 36. That's equal to 72 thirds. Or 24. Therefore, 
Our answer is correct. Example number two, making a model. There are two-thirds as many boys as girls. If there are 30 girls, how many boys are there? Let's use this model. Since you have 30 girls, we label this boys and girls. Since one unit is 30, then, one-third unit is 10. Hence, two-thirds unit is 20. So, there are 20 boys. Example number three, making a table. Mother bought two and three-fourths kilograms of mangoes. She also bought some bananas. Together, the mangoes and bananas weighed four and one half kilograms. How many kilograms of banana did she buy? Using this table, we have four and one half as the total, and two and three fourths for the mass of mangoes. Then we are looking for the mass in kilograms of bananas. Let n be the mass of the mangoes in kilograms. Hence, you can get the answer by subtracting 2 and 3 fourths from 4 and 1 half. That is 4 and 1 half minus 2 and 3 fourths. Look at the fractions. They are unlike. Therefore, we need to look for its like fraction or we change it to similar fractions. One half, that becomes two fourths, and three fourths becomes three fourths. Now we have two fourths and three fourths. Applying the steps and subtracting mixed numbers, we will look for the whole numbers and the fractions. In 2 fourths minus 3 fourths, we cannot subtract the subtrahend from the minuend since 3 is higher than 2. Therefore, we will borrow 1 from the whole number 4. That is 3 and 4 fourths. Then we will add this 2 fourths. That becomes 3 and 6 fourths. Now, can we subtract 3 fourths from 6 fourths? Yes. Now, let us subtract the whole numbers and the fractions. 3 minus 2 equals 1. And 6 minus 3 is 3. And copy the same denominator. The answer is 1 and 3 fourths. This is the mass of bananas in kilograms. But to check, add 2 and 3 fourths from 1 and 3 fourths. See if we can get 4 and 1 half. 2 and 3 fourths plus 1 and 3 fourths, that is 2 plus 1 is 3. Then add the numerators and copy the denominator. The answer is 3 and 6 fourths. Next, 6 fourths is not yet in the simplest form, then we will simplify. That becomes 1 and 1 fourth. Then add the whole numbers. That is 4 and 2 fourths. 4 and 2 fourths is not yet in the simplest form. So we will simplify. The answer is 4 and 1 half. 4 and 1 half is the total mass or kilograms of mangoes and bananas. Therefore, our answer is correct. One and three quarts kilograms of banana. Example number four. 
Finding the Hidden Question I withdrew 2,000 pesos from my bank account to buy a gift for my mother. In one store, I spent three-fifths of my money to buy a dress for her. I spent one-fourth of the remainder for my lunch. How much money was left me after buying lunch? Let us understand the problem. Given amount of money withdrawn from the bank, that is 2,000 pesos. Amount spent for the dress, which is three-fifths of the money withdrawn from the bank. And amount spent for lunch, which is one-fourth of the remainder after buying the dress. What is at in the problem? How much was paid for lunch? There are hidden questions. And these are, How much was the dress? How much remained after buying the dress? And how much was paid for lunch? First, let's answer this. How much was the dress? It's three-fifths of 2,000 pesos. Or, three-fifths times 2,000. Or, 2,000 over 1, that is 6,000 over 5. Or, 6,000 fifths. That's equal to 1,200 pesos. Next, how much remained after buying the dress? That is 2,000 pesos minus 1,200 pesos. That is equal to 800 pesos. Next, how much was paid for lunch? That is one-fourth of the remainder, which is 800 pesos, or multiply one fourth and eight hundred. That is eight hundred over four or eight hundred fourths. The answer is two hundred pesos. Hence, the amount of money left after buying lunch is eight hundred pesos minus two hundred pesos. That's equal to six hundred pesos so how much money was left to me after buying lunch that's right i have 600 pesos left next step in polya's problem solving model is carry out or use the plan in carrying out the plan, we solve the problem according to the chosen plan. Fourth step, check back to see if your plan worked. Read the problem again and check whether the answer makes sense. Again. What are Polya's four-step problem-solving model? We have understand and analyze the problem. Two, devise a plan. Carry out or use the plan. And check back to see if your plan worked. Remember this. Understand the problem very well to find out what strategy will be used to solve it. Always check whether the answer makes sense. Now for your activities, answer, check your understanding on pages 99 to 100, use your math notebook, and answer, keep practicing on page 101. Remember class, that in everything we do, Jesus is glorified.
I hope you have learned a lot. To end this presentation, I must say, thank you for watching.